Welcome everybody to week five of Prospect Football Week. We presented by Buffalo Wild Wings in Mount Prospect. I'm here with head coach Dan DeBuff. Off another win in that last week. Thanks for joining us again. Favorite day of the week. There you, you go. go. I do. You told me that several times so far, and I'm so happy. The offense played a really complete game in both the running and passing games. What did you like about the performance against Deerfield? Um, I, I like that we continue to stay balanced. Uh, we're going to continue to try to develop running game and passing game and, and try to keep defenses off balance. Yeah, we're going to talk to Coach Collins later in the show, but the defense has been a rock this season. What Absolutely. did the performance against Deerfield tell you about the consistency so far from this defense? Yeah, the defense continues to be the backbone of our team, and I think that goes off to hats off to Coach Collins and getting those guys prepared on a weekly basis. Uh, we also have some really good leadership on the defensive unit, and it's awesome to see those guys take charge. Yeah, absolutely. We talked about the offense and defense, but special teams against Deerfield played really well as well. What was the focus heading into Deerfield for the special teams unit? Yeah, Coach Weish's uh, biggest focus on special teams is, is not to be transitionary, meaning like we're not just out there to get to offense or to get to defense. He wants it to be a, a game-changing type of unit. And honestly, up to this point, I think our special teams have done that. Yes, they have. Michael Schaff has ran for two touchdowns on the offensive side of the football and had that big interception to close out the game. How has he been a model of consistency for the team to look up to? Yeah, I'd be curious to see uh, his stat line carries to touchdown ratio yeah. uh, compared to other area backs. <laughs> He's probably only got about 17 or 18 carries on the <laughs> year. and. I mean, how many touchdowns? He's got at least five. Yeah, at least five. So, so he's been awesome. Uh, he, he's a great, great teammate, great leader, and he's going to continue to do great things for us. Absolutely. With this win, you're now three and one in non-conference play, especially these next three games coming up against teams who are combined eleven and one. How yeah. important are these are these games to win, especially with the conference? season coming up. Yeah, they're important. Uh, we have a ton of respect for our upcoming opponent in Hersey. We know that they're going to be super tough. Uh, and then the two games after that we know are going to be tough as well. Uh, the focus isn't necessarily going to be on them, though. It's mm -hmm. going to be continued to be on us and improving on a day-to-day -day basis. Thank you, Coach Jabuff, and stay tuned for an interview with wide receiver Ryan Treviola. Welcome back to Prospect Football Weekly, presented by Buffalo Wild Wings and Mount Prospect. I'm here with linebacker Ryan Treviola. Ryan, thanks for being on the show. Thanks for having me. Last week you scored a touchdown in the homecoming game. Uh, at home. What was that feeling like when you caught it? Uh, it was just great because, I mean, we've been working on, like, uh, fake routes, like, a lot this year, and it's just been, it was a good feeling to, like, actually make one, like, prove that the working is, like, like, paid off, I guess. Mm -hmm. I think a very undercooked part of this football team is the receiving core. What is the mindset heading to every week as a receiver? Uh, just look and lock. We just can't really fumble the ball and take what the defense gives us because, like, short gains, that's what works for us. Absolutely. Being Jimmy Martin's top receiver last week, what connection do you have with Jimmy and the rest of the offense? I mean, I know him last year because I played a couple games uh, before I got injured, and then we just like hang out outside of that. So I mean, our connections, I guess, are pretty good. Absolutely. Speaking a little more to that injury, how hard was it to get back onto the field, and how good does it feel to be back out there? I mean, it was just time. So. Uh, after the physical therapy and all that, I knew that I wanted to come back. Same with Matt Neal. So, I mean, it's just great to get back on the field, especially in homecoming game. Absolutely. And now with head coach Dan DeBuff, how do you think this receiving core has transitioned from a run-heavy offense to these three to these four or five wide sets? I mean, I guess he just believes in, like, the small receivers because we don't really have the height or, like, strength or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, just short gains again, like, that's how we're going to do it. Absolutely. Yeah. That's all we have for Ryan Traviola. Stay tuned for an interview with defensive coordinator Brock Collins. Welcome back, everybody, to Prospect Football Weekly, presented by Buffalo Wild Wings in Mount Prospect. I'm here with defensive coordinator Brock Collins. Thank you for joining us once again this year. My pleasure. All righty. Your defensive unit played probably its best game against Deerfield, especially keeping Deerfield off the board until the fourth quarter. What was the focus heading into the week? Um, you know, the focus like every week, uh, is to attack. You know, we have three rules, Wyatt, for the defense. Rule one is attack, rule two is swarm, and rule three is finish. So if we do those things on a week-to-week -week basis, uh, we like our chances. So that's always the focus. Deerfield, yeah. yeah, Deerfield okay. came back to make it interesting in the fourth quarter. How did you try to keep the defense calm when they scored a couple unanswered scores? Uh, you know, we tell them every every game. Uh, you know, the other teams practice, they watch film, so they're going to make plays, uh, and 
all we need to do is have belief in ourselves that when we're called on to come up in a big spot, we're going to be able to do that. So, you know, we had played well enough to that point uh, where we had a bit of a cushion. Obviously, you don't want to give up those scores, but, you know, I just came over to the bench and kept reminding those guys that we would be out there on the field in a big spot and that they would come through, uh, which happened. I don't know if you saw uh, the guy with the club out I, there. I did. Yeah, he, uh, Garve we call him. Yeah. Did you know that? I did not. Yeah, Garve. He uh, he took that club and he hit the ball. It bounced around up in the air mm -hmm. and Shaffis came out of nowhere yeah. and grabbed it. Yeah. Yes. So that kind of sealed the game for us. Um, so yeah, that was that was the message. They they know that they have the ability to come through in big situations. So yeah, underclassmen have played big roles in the first four games of the season. How have guys like Adam Ryerson, Adam Mecky, Gary Moeller, and others impacted this defense so far through the first four games? Well, they've obviously played some big roles. Uh, you know, Ryerson he made a few sticks in the game. Uh, coming from that 16 position, he uh, he played the Keen drill nicely. You remember Brennan Keen from I, last I year? I do. Yeah, we named a drill after him. Oh. So we try to get Ryerson to play like Keen. It's working a little bit. Um, but he had some nice sticks. He's he's a uh, more of a vocal leader, I would mm -hmm. say. Surprisingly, oh, yes. Yes. surprisingly, great, great he talker. he talks a lot of trash during his practice. Gets under uh, Coach Bashir's skin a little bit, which is good. We like to do that. Uh, Mackey, obviously, big big time hitter for us. Uh, you know, we move him around, try to use him as much as we can uh, in the run game. Uh, Garve obviously has been playing fairly well in terms of his uh, coverage ability. I think you're missing Zach Zai, mm -hmm. the zapper, we call him. Uh, he he fills nicely on runs. So yeah, I think I think you know, looking to the future, we've got. Some guys coming back that have played significant minutes mm -hmm. for us this year, and hopefully they can continue to improve from week to week. Yeah, seniors have also been a big strength in the linebacking course, like Michael Shafts and Michael Sima. How have they been big in leading this off in this defense? You know, it's wonderful that we have Shaft um, as fresh as we do. Obviously, you got to hand that to uh, Luke Zardzen coming through on offense at running back a little bit. Uh, and he, you know, Shaft just gets it. He gets the, the defense. The other thing is that we try to make it pretty simple for him. We try to get people in the way so that they can't touch Shaftist mm -hmm. and Shaftist can run around and make plays. Which, you know, if you go back and watch the film, Wyatt, a lot of times you'll be thinking, like, I, who made that play? And then when you watch it back, it's Shaftist, mm -hmm. like, from the other side of the field. Very fast runner. He's fast. I would agree with that. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, Chima, Michael Sima, um, you know, he just, he's, again, another, he's a, a rock in the middle of that defense in terms of being able to line guys up and understanding what we're doing defensively. You know, with those two guys, um, we can do a lot of the weird stuff that we do in terms of having fronts that look weird and mm -hmm. things like that. Yeah. I don't know if you've noticed. we bring blitzes from yes. everywhere yeah, yeah. so uh, you know they, both of those guys have really helped us there um, you know we've named a couple blitzes after Chima's dogs do you know he has four dogs I did not he That's does a very interesting fact. Harley Scarlet Autumn and Ginger I could not Harley's remember Harley's his favorite though, oh really just so you know <laughs> that's good the future it's yeah. good to know you got it yeah with coach DeBuff's arrival has there been a large change of how the defense plays compared to last season no there hasn't which is uh, you know a testament to coach uh, he has the trust in me to basically do what what we were doing last year. Last year was the first year that we ran the the three four, mm -hmm. and I really kind of fell in love with it. You know, it was my baby. Oh, why? Um, it was really the most control I had over the defense as a defensive coordinator. Coordinator, even though this is my now fifth year. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I was really excited to continue. Uh, doing the same things defensively, and like I said, coach put the trust in me to mm -hmm. to kind of do my thing. So uh, yeah, that's that's been good. It hasn't really changed at all. I've noticed that you your your defense has a cowboy hat mm. that that your players will the turnover wear. Stetson. The, yeah. Really? Could you, yeah. can you talk about that first? I'd love to. Um, so I think you're familiar with 
the University of Miami. Yes, right, the turnover, turnover chain. Turnover chain. Mm -hmm. So the team wanted to to do something for when we get turnovers, uh, and I don't know if you're familiar with Coach DeBuff's outlaw. Yes, his uh, outlaw theme. Yes, theme. Mm -hmm. Correct. So we wanted it to be in theme. Uh, I don't know if how close have you gotten to the to the stats and have you gotten close enough to see what's on it? I have not. What is okay? On it? Well, there are a couple shark logos on there too. Oh, I'll I'll leave that up to your your imagination. But there's some. There's some sharks on there uh, as well. So basically, you know, as a defense, you're, you're always looking for turnovers and you're always looking for ways to get kids excited about playing football. Uh, and that's one of them. So yeah, whenever we get that, that turnover, somebody dons the turnover Stetson and we get excited. Now it would be nice, Wyatt, and this is just a PSA. Okay. It would be nice if the crowd got excited when the defense made plays also. Yeah. I don't know if you noticed uh, in the game uh, on Friday, we had four turnovers. You did, but it seemed like people didn't care when we got the. Like that's nice when we recover a fumble. That's something to get excited yeah, about. Absolutely. Not just when the offense is scoring touchdowns, yeah. though. We're all excited when that Everybody. happens too. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So coming coming off a fifty one point performance against Maine West, what is going to be? What, what's the game plan for Hersey this week? Well, you know what? Hersey is probably the most balanced offense we've seen so far this year. They've got some excellent athletes. They've got great overall team speed. Uh, again, comes down to the simple, the simple three rules. Yes. Okay. But yeah, you know, uh, Hersey's earned every single point that they've that they've scored this year, uh, and they're they're a tough team offensively. But you know, all we can do is is do what we do well. Mm -hmm. And yeah. what is that? Do you remember? No, I do not. Oh, okay. We went over this. We've been the we've been talking for yeah. a while. So. Fight. So it's attack, swarm, and finish. Finish plays. That's going to be big this attack, this attack, swarm, and finish. That's I'll correct. make sure to say that during the game this week. And thank you, Coach Collins. And stay tuned for a preview of the Hersey game with head coach Dan DeBuff. Welcome back, everybody, to Prospect Football Weekly, presented by Buffalo Wild Wings in Mount Prospect. Coach DeBuff has made the long journey back to the table. Thank you for making the journey. You got it. Absolutely. There's been a lot of change in personnel in the Hersey football program from last year, and they started out undefeated. What have you seen so far from them on film? Yeah, they're super fast, uh, super athletic. I think their coaching staff does a really good job of preparing their guys. Uh, watching their film, you can tell uh, that they're coached really well and a disciplined team. Absolutely. Hersey's had a high-powered offense so far in their first four football games. How important is it going to be for the defense to keep them from getting off to fast starts like they did last week against Maine West? Yeah, really important. Uh, I think, like we've talked about, our defense is definitely our backbone right now. And it'll be really interesting to see uh, them take on probably the toughest offense we've seen to this point. Yeah, last week it looked like you played the most complete game of the year. How essential is it to repeat that this week with both a really good horsey offense and a pretty good defense? Yeah, we're looking to improve week to week. Uh, you know, we're playing a lot of underclassmen, and I think you're going to see a lot of improvement from week to week. If we can continue to have that improvement, I think by the time we get to the end of the year, we're going to be really tough. Absolutely. Hersey has a two-quarterback system the past couple weeks, and they threw a combined five touchdown passes last week against sure. Bain West. How are you trying to game plan with these two very different quarterbacks? Oh, yeah, they're, they're two different players, two very different players. Uh, they both have a lot to bring to the table. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're going to prepare for both of their strengths, whether it's running or passing. Absolutely. Hersey beat a pretty good Maine West team last mm -hmm. week, and the defense is a pretty good unit as well. How tough do you think it's going to be to get points against Hersey? I think it's going to be tough. Uh, I think we're going to have to play a, a really complete game. We're going to have to play our best game uh, to be in it. I think they're really tough with their front seven. Uh, their defensive line is really tough, as well as their linebacking core. Uh, and then you would think their defensive backs are weak, but they're not. They're tough, mm -hmm. too. Yes. So we're, we're going to have to play uh, our best game. Absolutely. First conference opponent, and then comes a two-game road trip to BG and Rolling Meadows. Mm -hmm. How especially important is this game to win? I think they're all important to win. Uh, winning football games is hard. Uh, we're, we're really going to take it one at a time and, and enjoy the process focusing on ourselves. Absolutely. You're trusting the process. And that'll do it for Prospect Football Weekly, week number five. We will see you for week number six next week as we prepare for Buffalo Grove. We'll see you next week.